Hi, in this video, we're going to talk about nucleic acids. These are molecules like DNA and RNA, and these are the molecules that contain your genes. Nucleic acids are made of three components, phosphate groups, pentose sugars, which are five carbon sugars, and nitrogenous bases. which make up the proverbial genetic code. At the top of our example, we can see phosphate. Remember, phosphate carries a negative charge. Underneath phosphate, we have ribose, which is the pentose used in RNA. Below ribose is deoxyribose. This is the sugar used in DNA. The only difference between these molecules is the presence of this alcohol group, which on DNA is just a hydrogen. Now, the name RNA and DNA actually stems from the difference in this sugar. RNA stands for ribonucleic acid, and DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. I'm going to take myself out of the image just so we can talk about these nitrogenous bases. Now up at the top we have adenine, which is represented with the letter A. Next to it is guanine represented with the letter G. These two molecules are called purines. And you can recognize purines by this two ring structure I'm highlighting. Now, looking below adenine, we have cytosine represented with the letter C uracil with the letter U and thymine represented with the letter T. These molecules are called pyrimidines Now, a nice way to remember purines from pyrimidines and be able to differentiate them is with a simple mnemonic. For the purines, we use the mnemonic whoops, pure as gold. With the pyrimidines, we use the mnemonic cut cut pi. So pure as gold and cut pi. Now nucleic acids are polymers of nucleotides. A nucleotide is what you get when you put together all the pieces we just talked about. So as you can see in our example we have a nucleotide, this whole molecule, and it's made up of the phosphate group, the pentose, and the nitrogenous base. Now you might notice that there are some numbers above the carbons in the sugar. Now 
I'm only pointing this out because we're going to talk about it again in a minute. So I want you to notice that the phosphate group is attached to what's called the 5' prime carbon. Don't worry about the naming convention. This is something that organic chemists use. But I want you to know that the phosphate group is attached to the 5' prime carbon and that it is this hydroxyl group at the 3' prime carbon. And you'll see why this is important on the next page. So let's turn the page.